This week's column is called uh, mind-boggling, simply mind-boggling. The recent postal strike, which was settled by an act of parliament, was simply mind-boggling. The recent Canadian Union of Public, or, pardon me, the Canadian Union of Public Employees, or CUPW, has its mandate to make things better for its employees. Nobody argues that. But the demands of the union so far outreach the average hourly worker is the most the public has trouble accepting it. The hourly wages for a starting Cup W worker are reported to be $23 per hour. The Canada Post Corporation, or CPC, is reported to want to roll that back to $18 an hour. Many people would give a lot to be paid $18 an hour to start. On that point alone, Cup W lost a lot of public support. The other claims about work safety and speed of equipment were obscure and would take a lot more investigation to validate the claims, but one has to wonder how working with postal equipment could be nearly as dangerous as, say, working at the hog plant uh, with a knife and with uh, power saws, or getting up on the roof of a house. As the strike was coming to an end, Cup W officials were quoted as saying they weren't going to disobey the government because the fines for doing so were too high. Well, good for them. Isn't that just nice of them? But they weren't going to be happy going back to work under a government order. Well, maybe they would like to not have a job to go back to, as some people were faced with as their company was forced to close due to the postal disruption. Now, CPC is partly to blame, I'm sure, for its problems. Any corporation that is as inflexible as Canada Post likely has lots of problems in its workings. The problem is largely due to the fact that it's a crown corporation. It probably should be privatized or turned into an employee shareholder corporation. Any corporation that large is going to have problems and long-standing ones because just of its very nature and its traditions. It's not responsive to change and to accepting new technology. Given the rate of change in technology, CPC will likely be run out of existence. I mean, that's a shame. Locally in Nipawa, the post office lobby isn't accessible 24 hours a day as it once was. That's largely because Canada Post started selling a lot of retail swag like coins and collector stamps and other retail souvenir stuff. It's the type of stuff that's prone to theft and vandalism, hence this limited hours of access to the lobby. Why they got into that business is hard to tell, but maybe it just makes money, I don't know. It's largely a distraction to its core business, but the net result is that service isn't what it used to be because of reduced hours and of lobby access. You can buy a key to get into the lobby after hours, but we have refused to do that, just on a matter of principle. The net effect of the Cup W CPC strike lockout is that both will suffer, as was noted in my last week's Nipawa Banner column. It's not that delivering letters, newspapers, or packages is rocket science. There are many alternate methods. With faxes, emails, and internet downloads, many, many traditional mail functions can be done now without the post office. There was a time when the only federal government presence in a town or village was the post office. It was sad to lose that, when many small centers simply had such a reduction in mail volume that a dusty little row of lock boxes is all that's left of what was a federal institution in every town and village. The uncertainty and the actual strike lockout went on for nearly four weeks. It was nerve-wracking and devastating to small businesses. Many small businesses still depend on Canada Post to get their checks in the mail and to send out bills. You can rest assured that every other method will be explored. Many businesses were delayed in their cash flow from $2,000 to $10,000 a day as the strike wore on. Life has to go on. Bills have to be paid. Payroll has to be met. For a struggling business or a new business without reserves, it was a very hard time. And it won't be forgotten. Whatever sympathy Cup W or Canada Post had remaining in the hearts of Canadians is pretty much gone. That too is a shame because workers and management are all people trying to make a living, feed their families, pay the house mortgage and all those good things. They have all been victimized by a labor union, 
and by an ill-guided corporation that have lost their way, lost their original purpose. That's what's happening. That's what happens when things go astray. If there is any redirecting the path of Cup W and Canada Post, the next two years will be their last chance. The Canadian public and small business will not give them another chance. Thank you.